in the present lecture we will study a class of methods for solving univariate optimization problems single variable optimization problems that class which uses the idea of derivatives so all of these do not necessarily use the derivatives or need you to evaluate derivatives but they use the concept of the derivative no? and that means that they depend on the function being differentiable so typical attempt by a derivative based method is to satisfy the first order necessary condition this these methods have the advantage that if the starting point is close to a minimum point as you expect if you have done a prior bracketing then the convergence is quite fast and you can show that the convergence is quadratic the disadvantage of these methods is that if the starting point is not that close to a minimum point particularly if some other maximum point particularly if some maximum point or some other stationary point which is neither maximum nor minimum a point of inflection is also close by then uh, trying to set the derivative equal to zero may take you to that other point which is not what you were looking for okay so in brief you can say that derivative based methods since they do not directly try to find the minimum point they basically try to get it indirectly through an attempt to find a stationary point so these methods do not have global convergence you are not sure that it will converge at all okay now these methods are ideal for convex functions in which other stationary points are not nearby okay so let us see what are those methods the ideal the um prototype method of this class is the neutral method so if say in an iteration you have the point xk in your hand and you want the point x star which is somewhat away from xk say xk plus delta k delta x then from taylor series you know now you are writing the taylor series for f prime not for f okay actually you can write the taylor series for f and then differentiate it once you will get the same thing so f prime at x star which is xk plus delta x will be f prime at xk plus first order change now first order change in f prime will involve f double prime f double prime at xk into delta x plus higher order terms we are neglecting for the time being hoping that delta x that we are looking for is small enough okay now you want x star to be the minimum point where this should be zero okay so for this to be zero this side if you equate to zero you get the expression for delta x that will be minus first derivative divided by second derivative that is this okay so if you take this delta x and add to xk then you hopefully get x star actually you don't get because the terms that have been neglected are not necessarily extremely small so you get the next iterate from where you repeat the process now in newton's method in this method in this iteration the advantages of derivative based methods is at most okay which you get if the function happens to be convex and the disadvantage in other cases is also most prominent okay so newton's method happens to be the best method as, as well as the most dangerous method okay so best when it is working in its zone of good operation so 
how it can be bad you see from this side the function is convex from this side the function is convex and from here if you start okay x not then very quickly you will reach the minimum point x star on the other hand if you start from here you see this is a function in which you have good bracket here high here high in between somewhere low somewhere low okay so there is a bracket it's unimodal a single minimum in between okay still it is not convex you see beyond this point it is concave again from here somewhere it will be convex so this convex concave convex in between there is a point of inflection okay where also the second derivative may be very small where the second derivative may be very small even though the plot is not horizontal it's not a minimum or maximum this point x not prime okay but since the second derivative is going to be small so when you divide with it then you get the quotient which is large that means delta x is actually large which was supposed to be small you see so that is why x not prime this one this point close to inflection point is a very dangerous starting point for newton's method and there the second derivative is close to zero that means delta x large and this truncated taylor series is invalid and from here if you find delta x large that means if you start from here and you go somewhere here then the hope of coming back here goes down okay so this kind of situation may happen with newton's method so when you use newton's method you have to be very sure that such things don't happen that is you have a good idea about the behavior of the function you know your function okay another issue with newton's method is that you have to evaluate the second derivative which may be costly numerically okay because for every function you cannot expect nice expressions which you just evaluate in your calculator it may require a lot of computation okay so so far as the issue of evaluating the derivative is concerned that can be remedied very easily by supplying a finite difference estimate of the second derivative and then you get the second method so in newton's method iteration if you replace the second derivative by a finite difference approximation between two points then in the denominator you want the second derivative right so the difference of the first derivatives divided by difference of the x values so this by this is the finite difference estimate of the second derivative exactly in the place of second derivative in the newton's method iteration formula if we insert this then we get second method why is it called second method because whereas newton's method operates with the tangent to the plot of f prime this method operates on a chord connecting two points on the graph okay and chord is second so it uses a chord or second between the two points okay and therefore the second method this method has to be seeded with two values x0 and x1 using those two you get x2 and then out of the two old ones you will drop one retain the new one so in every iteration you will drop one of the old points you can devise several policies how do you retain one and throw the away the other it is not necessary to always throw away the oldest okay it is possible that out of the two old ones you keep the oldest but the newer one you have dropped when another new one has come but the fresh one that you have got just now you have to keep otherwise you know there will be stagnation so one has to change so advantage of newton's method is somewhat less because here you do not get that second derivative advantage quadratic convergence like that you may not get but close to quadratic convergence you get okay 
So, however, the danger is also a little reduced because since two points are in hand, you can always talk of maintaining a bracket or some such thing to an extent you can do. So, it is unlikely that at two points, the derivative values will be exactly same or very close. Might be, but chances are less than the second derivative somewhere becoming zero. Now, in second method, we used the derivative values at two points. Now, at the two points, if you have evaluated the two points, apart from derivatives, the function values, you must have evaluated. Okay, so whether the formula needs or not. Now with the function values at two points and the derivative values also at the same two points, you can fit a cubic function in the local neighborhood. Okay, so if you use that cubic function, a local cubic fit, between two points using function values and derivatives, then you get a cubic estimation method. So what do you do? You say that at x0 and x1, or say in general, xk minus one and xk, I have got the function value and I have got the derivative value. That is at xk minus one, function value, derivative value. At xk also, function value, derivative value. This much I have in hand. Then you can propose a cubic expression for fx for local neighborhood. Okay, it's a local cubic fit. And then putting these four pieces of data here, insert xk minus one in this and its derivative. You get two equations in the coefficients. Then insert xk in this and this, you get another two equations. So four equations in the four coefficients you get. From here you can get a0, a1, a2, a3. That means a local cubic fit you can establish using those two points, data from those two points. This is the way you actually um, approximate a function by Hermite polynomial. This is a Hermite polynomial. Okay. So using them, then you say that now our intention was to get the value of x for which this is zero, right? And this is a quadratic expression. So you basically have to solve a quadratic equation. So solve a quadratic equation, get a solution of it, okay? So find out the root of the quadratic model of the derivative, which is the derivative of the cubic model that you have fit with your present local data, okay? So essentially that means one iteration of cubic estimation method minimizes a local cubic model of fx. Actual fx we don't know, but from whatever data we have in the local neighborhood, we have fit a cubic model, and in the local neighborhood, we minimize that. And now, starting from two points, we have developed a third point, and one of the two old points will be dropped, and the other one with the new point will go to the next iteration. And when it starts converging, you will see that the next 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 points turn out to be very close and the function value does not change much and the derivative value goes closer to zero that is convergence okay now we were talking about cubic estimation method good things we have discussed what can be the bad things in exceptional circumstance if this does not have a real solution, a real root. Okay. Unlikely to happen if you have done bracketing and everything properly, but might still happen in some borderline cases. In any case, this will give you two roots. A quadratic has two roots. You will have the issue of choosing between them. And if you say, I will evaluate the function and then choose, then it is going to be too much because function evaluation is going to be costly. So there are issues. And anyway, second derivative is not needed, but the first derivative is needed. As answer to all these issues that we are now raising, we have quadratic estimation method that says that we don't want derivatives at all. We will work with function values only, but not at two points, but three points. 
the way with four pieces of data you can fit a local cubic with three pieces of data you can fit a local quantity so start with x0 x1 x2 at three points evaluate the function just the function not the derivative using that you can fit a local quadratic model like this okay because you insert x0 and the corresponding function value x1 and function value x2 and function value you get three linear equations in a0 a1 a2 to solve them you always get a solution of that unique solution you get a0 a1 a2 with that a0 a1 a2 you try to set the derivative equal to 0 for some x okay so basically its derivative is this so actually you will not need a0 a1 and a2 are what you will need okay and from here you get the value of x when this is where this is 0 as minus a1 by twice a2 that is this and since the function is quadratic derivative is linear so the derivative has a clear real root okay no two roots no complex roots real root single one no confusion okay so using three data sets at x equal to xk minus 2 xk minus 1 and xk you develop this model and from that develop the get the value of x where this model gets minimized that is its derivative is zero and that is the next iterate now out of the three old you drop one take the other two and this new one and proceed for the next iteration okay now you will say that a quadratic may have two different kinds of plots one is this and the other is this okay if the second one is there then the quadratic has a maximum and not a minimum but that is unlikely to be the case because you have done bracketing so this high low high pattern you already have in the local neighborhood so that is an objection which actually does not arise so advantages against other methods first of all we don't need derivatives still we classify it as a derivative based method because even though this method is not using derivatives its idea is to get the point where derivative is zero right because this is equated to zero to get the value of x but derivatives you don't have to compute so computational cost you save and a single real candidate for xk plus one you get from here there is no dilemma okay and maintaining a bracket across iterations and hence a convex quadratic model all the time is not difficult when you choose the two old points and the new one you can always ensure a bracket bracket pattern among them okay depends if you want that you do that on the other hand if you want the lowermost three that also you can do except that you cannot keep all the three older ones which is unlikely to happen let us take an example now we have a function fx which we want to minimize using this method quadratic estimation method so we start with a bracket so to bra get a bracket we evaluate the function at suitable values 0 1 2 3 so we get the function value at 0 is 3 at 1 it is this i have evaluated and put the values okay at 2 it is this see it is going down further down further down and then it is going up and here we get hold of the bracket from 2 to 4 it goes down and then again up so we have the bracket from 2 to 4 and we know that at an intermediate point the function value is lower than both the extremes so we have a valid bracket and we proceed and to begin with quadratic estimation method three needs three points we already have three points so we proceed with them so and before we proceed uh, you might be thinking what is the function that we are minimizing now you see i have not uh, told you the function okay and not necessary 
because if you are thinking of the expression of the function, then for being a function, it does not need to have an expression. Okay, all that is required for a function is that given a value of x, there is a unique value of f x, and that I am supplying you. Okay, you wanted at zero, I gave you the value. You wanted at one, I gave you the value. Okay, so like that, the function is a black box sitting as a subroutine somewhere, and whenever you want, you supply its argument value, and you get the function value. Okay, so it may not have a closed form expression. So you may need to evaluate the function by a long three page calculations, calculation with a lot of conditionals, if, else, et cetera. Or the same thing, same calculation coded in a subroutine, in a function subprogram, in a computer program. Or it may be an experiment. Whenever you want the value of a function, you supply that to the lab and the lab fellow will conduct the experiment for you. Or you only go and conduct the experiment there in the laboratory and get the value. For example, on a truss structure, at one point, if you apply a load, and at another point, you want to find the deformation, you can do that through an experiment or a complicated calculation. Okay. So it doesn't have to have an expression clear cut. If it is, if it has, you are lucky. So in many of the examples, now onwards, we will consider functions as black boxes. The algorithm will work out at which point we need the function value and the function value at that point will be supplied. And in optimization problems, as in many other numerical analysis problems, it is the function evaluation, which is supposed to be the most costly part of the entire calculation, entire computation, not the method related additions, multiplications, etc. That may be comparatively less actually, because how much computational cost the function evaluation would involve, that is actually not in our hand. So that is why when we try to measure algorithms against their computational cost, we typically quote the computational cost in terms of function evaluations, per iteration or till convergence or whatever. Now, we have got the values of the function at x equal to 2, 3, and 4. So put 2, 3, 4 in a column vector. Now this transpose makes it a column vector. And the corresponding function values you put together here in another column vector. And then say that this fellow is a0 plus a1 times 2 plus a2 times 2 square. So that will be a0 into this plus a1 into this plus a2 into this equal to this. So this is the first row of the coefficient matrix. And this is the first entry of the right hand side vector. Like this, you will have a three by three system of equations from which you solve and get this vector of coefficients, a0, a1, a2, a0, a1, a2. And you wanted the new x for which we had the formula minus a1 by twice a2. So minus a1 by twice a2. You have got new x is this, okay? At that point, you evaluate the function again and give it, you get a lower function value. You see, compared to these three, this is lower, which is good news. Now we have four points out of which we will throw one, maybe the worst one we will throw and we have two interests. We need, we want to keep the three points with lower function values. And we want among the three, if we can, we want a bracket, high, low, high pattern. Okay. So these two objectives we have while choosing three points out of four. So we keep these three. That means we throw away two and keep three, four. And in between, we keep the new one. Okay, this has bracket also, and these are three lower ones also, higher one we have thrown away. Okay, so in this case, 
both the both our wishes are met at the same time fine so one iteration is over now with these three points and their function values we continue to the next iteration fine and get this new x value and the corresponding f value which is also very low now in this round there was a conflict between three best and the bracket the three best ways were not giving the bracket so here we have taken the last in the last situation at the time of making the choice both choices were met together this time there is a conflict so we have not uh, retained the uh, best three rather we have retained the bracketing okay so these three have been kept we go for another iteration and last time it was this this time it is a little different a little lower and the function value is still lower compared to here this time i have retained the lower most three lower most without bothering about bracketing however in your program this has not been done by a program it has it has been done step by step okay now in a program you have to decide on a policy so between the two policies whether to necessarily maintain a bracket or whether to necessarily take the three lowest i would advise you to maintain bracket even if that does not give you all the three lowest points okay that is safer the other necessity which is really necessity there is no option that the new one you have to keep you cannot keep all the three old okay because then there will be a stagnation and you cannot have the next uh, iteration at all okay so keeping these three x values and their function values we conduct another iteration of the quadratic estimation method and get 3.1416 with the function value 1 1.0000 innumerable number of zeros so i have just written one okay so that means it has converged okay and even if you now continue with another iteration you will come here only there is no other other place to go basically the function value has its minimum here with the minimum value one okay so now the same function we will use when we study other methods other computing methods which do not use derivatives in any way neither value nor concept okay and you will find there that those methods will not be this efficient because using the derivative has its advantages when the function is convex and when things are going fine okay which is most of the case for that matter that is why most of the time derivative based methods turn out to be more efficient okay so you will see that those methods will not converge so fast this has converged after bracketing post bracketing this has converged only in four iterations in each iteration only one new point has been evaluated only function no derivatives okay this is a very good accomplishment for the method okay so to summarize whatever we have done in this lecture all these uh, iterative methods of optimization single variable optimization use derivative root finding principle for getting hold of a minimum point and hence all of these are theoretically incapable of distinguishing between a minimum point and other stationary points however if you have done bracketing and if you are operating in only local neighborhood then the chances are high that there is no other close by stationary point other than the minimum that you are looking for okay that is most of the time the situation now that is why in practice this is not such a great disadvantage and these methods happily work in reasonably small brackets the methods converge fast okay so that we have seen just now is in in an example in the next lecture we will study region elimination methods 
in which we will just go on extending the idea of bracket high low high pattern a smaller interval with the same pattern a still smaller interval with the same pattern okay this will be our quest in this class of methods that is in the next lecture thank you